What is up and welcome back to Viral Ed where we create the best educational content on the planet. Don't forget to share our videos on social media whether that be Facebook or YouTube and most importantly don't forget to like, subscribe and turn that notification bell on. Today we are going to look at the classification of animals, more importantly how they are classified and why we need to classify them. Firstly the reason we classify animals is to help us identify and name all of them. It also allows us to understand the relationship between different animals and how these animals' interactions affect one another. In this video, we are going to cover three separate categories used to classify animals. Uh, one, the food they eat. Two, their reproduction. And three, their structure. Let's look at classifying according to the food they eat. So we have three categories within the food they eat. The first one is carnivores, second is herbivores, and third is omnivores. So carnivores are animals that derive its energy and nutrient requirements from a diet mainly consisting or exclusively consisting of animal tissue, uh, whether through predation, being a predator, or scavenging. An obvious example of this is a lion. They hunt other animals such as antelope or zebras uh, for their food source. Another example is a vulture, which scavenges its food and mainly consumes dead carcasses. Herbivores are animals or insects that get their energy from eating plants and only plants. They can eat parts of plants, fruits and vegetables produced by fruit bearing plants. These animals have special digestive systems that allow them to digest all kinds of plants including grass. An example of a herbivore is a panda. Uh, their diet consists of only bamboo. Omnivores is a kind of animal that eats other animals and plants. So some omnivores will hunt and eat their food, eating uh, herbivores and other omnivores. An example is a fox, as its diet includes fruits, berries and grasses, but also eats birds and small mammals like squirrels and mice. Now we are going to look at how the animals can be born and how this is used to uh, classify them. So there is two types of reproduction in animals, viviparous and oviparous. Uh, viviparous means that the animals are born from their mum's stomach. So they grow inside the mother for a specific time, which is dependent on the animal, uh, until they are ready to be born. An example of this is a koala. So their young is grown in their mother's stomach for 30 to 36 days before they are born. Uh, humans are another example, uh, with the young growing within the mother for 40 weeks until they are ready to be born. Oviparous means the animals are born from eggs. So the animals lay eggs and the babies then grow within the egg uh, until they are ready to come out. An example of this is a turtle. The female turtle lays numerous eggs in the sand and once the baby turtle has grown within the egg and is ready to come out, they break the eggshell and begin making their way to the ocean. Uh, another common example is uh, chickens. So the last category used to classify animals is their structure. So this is uh, according to whether they are invertebrate or vertebrate. Uh, so we're gonna firstly look at uh, the invertebrates, uh, which are animals that haven't got a backbone. Uh, there is lots of animals, over 90% on earth that fall within this category. Uh, some examples of these are arthropods, so your spiders, your butterflies, uh, mollusks, your octopus, snails, worms, uh, echinoderms, uh, these are like your starfish, and then sponges. So next is the vertebrates, uh, who do have a backbone. Uh, there is a lot fewer of these animals on Earth, less than about 10%, uh, but we're going to look a bit deeper into the vertebrates and what differentiates them from one another. Uh, the vertebrates consist of mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish. So let's look at mammals first. So mammals nurse their babies uh, with milk produced by their mammary glands. Uh, they have body hair, are warm-blooded, breathe through their lungs, and have got a skeleton that comprises of a backbone and a skull. So they include humans, dolphins, and bears. Birds, these animals are oviparous, uh, meaning they lay eggs, which can range anywhere from 1 to 17. They have wings, feathers, a very light skeleton, and instead of teeth, they have horn-like beaks or bills. They include emus, pigeons, and chickens. Reptiles are generally oviparous. Uh, they are vertebrates covered in special skin made of scales, uh, bony plates, or a combination of both. 
Because of their slow metabolism and heat-seeking behavior, reptiles are cold-blooded. They include crocodiles, alligators, snakes, lizards, and turtles. Amphibians are small vertebrates that need water or a moist environment to survive. They lay thousands and sometimes millions of small soft eggs, and they lay them in the water. The eggs are jelly-like. Uh, all can breathe and absorb water through their very thin skin. Uh, and the meaning behind amphibian is double life, uh, as the early part of the amphibian's life is spent in the water. Usually as they grow, they spend time on the land. An example is a tadpole, which later grows into a frog. Uh, and this process uh, amphibians go through is called metamorphosis. Uh, fish is our last one, and they are gill-bearing aquatic animals that lack limbs with digits. The combination of gills, fins, and the fact that they can only live in water make fish different from all other animals. Fish spend all of their lives in the water and are cold-blooded, and fish also lay many eggs. Uh, these include sharks, uh, and then all your different types of fish, so your salmon. Uh, so let's go through all the animals or all the vertebrates and have a look at what really differentiates them from each other. So mammals have hair or fur, they give birth to live young, uh, their mothers nurse their young with milk, uh, they have lungs and need air to breathe, uh, they only live or they live on land and have four legs uh, and ears that stick out and are warm blooded. Reptiles have scales not fur, have dry skin, usually lay eggs, uh, they have ear holes instead of ears, four legs or no legs and are cold blooded. Birds have feathers and wings, they lay eggs, have two legs, ear holes instead of ears and warm blooded. Amphibians live on the land and in water, they have webbed feet, they breathe with their lungs and gills, uh, cold blooded and moist smooth skin. Fish breathe underwater using gills, only live in water and have scales and fins and are cold blooded. So what is the difference between warm blooded and cold blooded? So warm blooded animals body temperature stays the same even when it is cold or hot outside. Uh, on the other hand, cold blooded animals body temperature depends on whether it is cold or hot outside. So if we look at a reptile, which we saw before are cold blooded, uh, if they are outside in winter, their body temperature is going to be really cold or really low. But if they're outside in the summer, their body temperature is going to be hot. So it can fluctuate. So I hope that this video helped further increase your understanding of animal classification. As always, I haven't been able to explain every little detail in this video without making it longer than 10 minutes. So if you have any questions, put a comment in the comment section or continue to research other videos. Uh, that is all for this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget if you like the video to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button and check out the other videos on this channel. Other than that, have an awesome day and I will see you next video.